Hi everybody, this is Math 024, Module 3, Part 1, and in Part 1 we're going to talk about applications of polynomials. Parts 2 and 3 will deal with functions and um, different parts of functions. So the first part for Module 3 will be applications of polynomials. So we worked with polynomials, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing them in the last module, Module 2. So now we're going to work with some applications, different types of problems you might see with polynomials. Now, for problem number one and two, um, these are like kind of word problems written out or problems written out. So it's a good way to learn to math lingo. It's not necessarily um, something you'll see all the time, but sometimes, you know, you might come across something that's written out and you have to write it into um, numerical form. So for number one, it says think of a number x. So x is going to be our variable. Subtract seven, multiply by three, add 30, divide by 3. Subtract the original number, the result is always 3. So they want us to create a polynomial expression and simplify to illustrate why the result is always true. And I think this problem is kind of cool because, um, you know, sometimes you see floating around on the internet like problems where it has you do all these things with numbers and then you always get like the same number out or the, you know, 5 out or so you know something in this case we're always going to get three so to write out how they plan these is they use algebra so we're going to start off and we're going to have steps so we have the number x so x is what we're starting with all right so first what we're going to do to that is step two says to subtract seven so we're going to have x minus seven now i can't really do anything with that right now but the next step says to multiply by three. So now the problem is going to look like this. Three times X minus seven. Okay, which I can right here simplify it a little bit by doing some distributive properties. So I'm going to move it up here. That's going to give me three X minus 21 because three times seven is 21. So now with this expression that I currently have, I need to add 30. So I'm going to add 30 to that, and I can, again, combine like terms, simplify. So now we have 3x, um, and then we have negative 21 plus positive 30, so that is going to give me plus 9, okay, and then um, step one, two, three, four says to divide by three. So we're going to take this expression and divide it by three, which if you recall, we can break it up. It's dividing by a monomial. Okay, so three divided by three, and I'm going to write it, I'll go to blue down here, is going to give me x, because the three is equal to one. And then nine divided by three is going to be three. Now, our original number was x. It says the last step is step five, subtract the original number. So we're gonna subtract x and my result is three. So that's how we wrote it out, um, our polynomial expressions. And you can see how they would always get three and it was done with algebra. So it was really, it's kind of a cool problem to look at. Um, I encourage you guys to try to make up your own um, number puzzle. All right, so for number two, it says write an expanded polynomial that represents the product of three consecutive integers. Then use the polynomial to find the product of 13, 14, and 15. So here, um, an expanded polynomial, we're only gonna use one variable. And just three consecutive integers are like the numbers, like if I did three, four, and five, those are three consecutive integers. Um, to represent the first integer, we're going to have x. And we want to write an expanded polynomial that represents the product of three consecutive integers. And remember, product means multiplication. So now, how do I go from three to four? Like, what do I do to three to get four? And hopefully, you're like, well, you add one to it. So if we start with x as our original number, our second number will be x plus one. And then again, starting at three, how do we go to five? We have to add two. So x plus two will be our final integer. 
And now they want us to use this polynomial to find the product of 13, 14, and 15. So if we multiply 13, 14, and 15 together, I do know that it equals, oops, um, let me move that back up there. Um, it equals 2,730. And you can get your calculator and try it. So now what I want you to do is I want you to try, do 13 times 13 plus 1 times 13 plus 2 and see if you get 2,730. And when you do the math, you should. So that is um, the second problem in our polynomials with application. Okay, so now for number three, we have um, a polynomial that they gave us, and the polynomial is negative 16t squared plus 80t plus 4 represents the height in feet of a ball thrown upward after t seconds. And they want us to find the height of the ball after two seconds. So t represents the time in seconds. So they want us to find the ball after two seconds. So they gave us t. So really for this problem, what we have to do is we have to simplify the expression using two for t. So I am going to do the math problem. I'm going to do negative 16 times two squared, because it's t squared, so two goes in for t, plus 80 times t plus four. All right, so exponents come first. And uh, oh, let me fill in instead of t right there. I want to put my two in there, sorry. Okay, so two squared is going to be four. So I'm going to have negative 16 times four plus 80 times two plus four. And again, following order of operations, we're going to do our multiplications next. Negative 16 times positive four is going to give me negative 64. 80 times 2 is 160, and then plus 4. So now we just have to add negative 64 plus 60 plus 4. And when I add those two together, or all three of those, I should say, um, I end up with 100. And our answer is going to represent the height of the ball in feet. So it's going to be 100 feet high if it is thrown. Um, so after two seconds, it's 100 feet high. Now for number four, um, this one asks for the percentage of the US population that owns a cell phone is represented by the polynomial um, 1 hundredth x squared plus 4.4x plus 10.7, where x is the number of years after 1995. Find the percentage of U.S. population that owned a cell phone in 2001 and then 2012. So here we are looking at two separate problems. We want to find out how many people owned a cell phone in 2001 and then also 2012. So I'm going to make a little dividing line here. All right, so 2001. Um, X is the number of years after 1995. So 2001 is six years after 1995. So when I do the math, I'm gonna do 0 0.1 times six squared plus 4.4 times six plus 10.7. And I use six because six, it's six years after 1995 that 2001 occurred. All right, so when we do the math, um, let's see here. When I do, if I square six, I get 36. And then if I multiply it times 0.1, it's going to give me 3.6 plus 4.4 times 6 is 26.4 plus my 10.7. So now I just need to add all those numbers together. And when I do, I get 40.7. So that means the percentage of the U.S. population that owns a cell phone in 2001 is 40.7. Now let's take a look at 2012. How many years after 1995 is that? And if we think about it, it takes five years to get to 2000, and then another 12 years would make it 17 years. So when I do the math here, I'm gonna do 0 0.1 times 17 squared plus 4.4 times 17 plus 
10.7. Okay, if I square 17, I get 289 and multiply it times 0.1 will give me 28.9 plus 4.4 times 17 is 74.8. And then plus my 10.7. So when I add it all together, I end up with 114.4. Now we're looking at percentages. You may say, well, that's over 100. That is correct. But think about it. By 2012, people had not only cell phones for personal use, but then for work. So, you know, pretty much everybody, you know, they're accounting for like some people have multiple cell phones. So, 114.4% of the population, the U.S. population, owns a cell phone. Kind of crazy to see that growth. Okay, now we are going to move into some geometry problems with polynomials. And the first problem says to consider the object below. So we have our pentagon here. It's a five-sided figure. And it says, write a polynomial to represent the perimeter of the object, and then find the perimeter when x equals 15. So remember, perimeter is the distance around the outside. And so to find the perimeter, you add up all the sides together. So we're going to write an expression to help us. So I'm going to add up all the sides. So I'm going to start off. We have 2x plus x plus 1, and I'm just working my way around the perimeter of the figure plus x minus 2 um, plus 2x plus 4 and then plus um, our last one is 3x minus 2. So now what we need to do is combine our like terms. So um, let's look at our x's. We have 2x plus x plus x plus 2x plus 3x. They're all positive. So 2x plus x is 3x. 3x plus x is 4x. Um, add two more, you get 6x, and then add three more, we end up with 9x. And now let's look at our numbers. So we have 1 minus 2, so that's going to give us negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4 will give me um, 3, and then 3 minus 2 will give me a positive 1. So our simplified expression is 9x plus 1. And now what they want us to do is to evaluate the expression when we have x equals 15 centimeters. So I'm going to plug in 15 for, not, or for x. So I'm going to do 9 times 15 plus 1. And when you do that math, 9 times 15 is 135 plus 1 is going to give me 136 and they gave us a unit of centimeters, so the distance around the figure if x equals 15 is 136 centimeters. Okay, so now, this one's much like the other one. First thing they want us to do is to find the perimeter of the triangle. So remember, perimeter means that we add up all the sides. So I'm going to work up here so I have space, but we're going to add 2x minus 1 plus... 5x minus 1. That's a minus there. It looks a little wonky. Let me fix it. Plus 3x plus 5. Okay, so combine your like terms. 2x plus 5x um, plus 3x will give me 10x. And then negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus positive 5 will give me a positive 3. So there's our perimeter, 10x plus 3. Now they want us to write an expanded polynomial in terms of x to represent the area of the triangle. Now for a triangle, to find the area of a triangle, the formula that we use is area is equal to 1 half base times height. And the height is going to be drawn from the vertex of one angle down to the base. So if we look, this 4x is our height. It's connected to the 3x plus 5. So those are our two values that we need. And when we substitute them into our formula, we're going to have 1 half times 4x times 3x plus 5. And we're going to multiply this to simplify. So if I do 1 half times 4, that's going to give me 2x 
times 3x plus 5. So now we're going to distribute the 2x, and we're going to end up with 6x squared plus 10x. So that would be my simplified formula for the area. Now, the last thing they want us to do is figure out the perimeter and the area when x equals 7. So if I go back to my perimeter, if x is 7, I'm going to do 10 times 7 plus 3. So that's going to give me 70 plus 3, or 73 inches for the perimeter. Now, area is going to be 6 times 7 squared plus 10 times 7. So 7 squared is 49. So we're going to have 6 times 49 plus 10 times 7 is 70. I'm going to put that on there. Um, and then 6 times 49 is going to give me 294 plus 70. And that is going to equal 364 an area is always um, units squared, so in our case, it will be inches squared. And that is our final answer there. Okay, so now, for each diagram they give us, they want us to find the simplified polynomial that expresses the area of the shaded region. And then we have to find the area of the shaded region when x equals 7 centimeters. So here, I think of this kind of like a picture frame. So we start off, we have this big rectangle, but then they cut out the three little squares in there. So that's the area for the pictures. We want the area of the shaded region. So we have to find basically first the area of that big rectangle and then subtract the area of those three smaller rectangles. So let's start off with the area of the big rectangle. And again, area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. So that means we are going to do um, 5x plus 3 times 4x minus 1. So we're going to need to FOIL here. So let's FOIL. 5x times 4x is 20x squared minus 5x plus 12x, and then minus 3. So we can combine like terms. We have 20x squared. Negative 5 plus positive 12 will give me positive 7x minus 3. But now we need to worry about those picture frames. And we have three, and they look like they all have the same dimensions. So the area of this square, because the dimensions are the same on the side and the, the length and the width, um, is x times x or x squared and we have three of those so it's going to be x squared plus x squared plus x squared to get the cutouts when you add those together remember you add those coefficients so it's going to end up being 3x squared that's the area of the cutouts that I have to subtract from the area of the large rectangle. So now when I do that, my final formula is 20x squared minus 3x squared will give me 17x squared plus 7x minus 3. And now I need to substitute in 7 for x because they said to plug in 7. And when we do the math here, I'm kind of running out of room. But 7 squared is 49. Um, 17 times 49 is 833. And then 7 times 7 is 49 minus 3. So our final answer is 879, and it was area. So it's going to be centimeters squared. Okay, so again, we got to find the area of the shaded region. We start off with a rectangle, and this time in the center, we have that um, triangle. So we'll have to use the area formula for a triangle. But let's start off. The area of the rectangle, again, is going to be, let me move it around again. Um, we are going to do length times width. So 10x plus 7 times 8x plus 1. So when I FOIL, we are going to end up with 
x squared plus 10x plus 56x plus 7. So if I simplify that, I have 80x squared plus 66x plus 7. All right, now the area of that triangle. So the area of the triangle, because we got to subtract that. Remember, it's one half base times height. So it's going to be one half times x times 4x minus 10. All right, so if we multiply one half times x, we end up with one half x times 4x minus 10. And we got to distribute. So half of 4 is 2. x times x is x squared. So we have 2x squared. Half of 10 is 5. And then we put our x on there. So our area of our triangle is 2x squared minus 5x. So we've got to subtract that from the area of the large rectangle. Now remember, because we are subtracting this and we have that expression, we have to distribute that negative one to everything on the inside. So it's going to become negative 2x squared and positive 5x. So if I have 80x squared minus 2x squared, that's going to give me 78x squared. Um, 66 plus 5x will give me plus 71x and then plus 7. So now the last thing we have to do is substitute in our 7 for x squared. So we're going to do 78 times 7 squared plus 71 times 7 plus 7. And these are the same directions we used for the other problem. Um, 7 squared is 49. 78 times 49 is 3,822. 71 times 7 is 497. And then we have our 7, and when we do it all together, it equals 4,326. And this one, um, I think it was centimeters they gave us for the 7, so centimeters squared. All right, and here we have our last problem, and we need to find the area of the shaded region. So our shaded region this time is a circle, and the formula, if you recall, for a circle to find the area area is equal to pi times radius squared and we do have our radius here of 3x so we would do you know pi times 3x squared um, when I distribute that 2 to each of those terms we're going to end up with 3 squared is 9x squared and then I'm just going to put the pi on the end so that's the area of our circle, but we do have to take and subtract out the area of our, our cutouts. And in this case, they're two different shapes. So the area, we're going to do the area of the rectangle first, and that's length times width. So it's going to be x times 2x plus 3. And we'll distribute, so we get 2x squared plus 3x. And then the area of the square is x times x, or it equals x squared. So really, what I'm going to do first is the cutouts, I'm going to add them together so that I can find the total area of the shapes that were taken out of the circle, I guess. Um, so if I take 2x squared plus 3x plus x squared, I can only combine like terms, so that's going to give me 3x squared plus 3x. And now, this problem, because we have that pi in there, it's going to be a little, you know, a little bit more involved to do. So the area of the, sh the shaded figure is going to be the area of the circle, which we know is 9x squared times pi, minus our 3x squared plus 3x. And really, there's no like terms here, so we can't do any combining of like terms. Um, the only thing I can do, remember, is with that negative, distribute it. So we have 9x squared times pi 
minus 3x squared minus 3x, because a negative times a positive makes it a negative. And that's our formula. Now, the last thing they want us to do is, again, to plug in that 7. So x equals 7 centimeters. So I'm going to go up here. I'll go to blue so you can see it. Um, and I'm going to do, you know, 9 times 7 squared times pi minus 3 times 7 squared minus 3 times 7. Okay, so we know that 7 squared is 49. So 9 times 49. And then times pi. For pi, I'm going to use 3.14. You could use the pi button on your calculator um, or 3.14. So when I multiply 9 times 7 squared times pi, I end up with 1,384 and 74 hundredths minus um, 7 squared again is 49. 3 times 49 is 147 and then minus 21. 3 times 7 is 21. So if I take the 1384.74 and minus 147 and 21, we end up with Um, 1,216 and 74 hundredths, and I'm just looking back at the direction, it says give exact and approximate in two decimal places. So this is our approximate answer, and this would be centimeters squared. The exact answer, when it asks for exact, I'm going to erase a little bit down here so we have some space. Um, for the exact answer, we have our formula right here. And because pi is an irrational number, um, that's where instead of multiplying out by pi, we're just going to combine any numbers that we can. So we're going to take it and we're going to still plug in. So I'm going to say a equals, and I'm going to do 9 times 7 squared times pi minus 3 times 7 squared minus 3 times 7. So again, 9 times 49 is 441, so it's going to be 441 pi minus um, 49 times 3 is 147, and then 21. So now we can't do anything with the pi, but our exact answer, because we're leaving pi in the form of a symbol instead of multiplying it out, um, will be negative 147 minus 21 is negative 168. So 441 pi minus 168. This would be the exact answer uh, because we can't do anything with that pi right now. So we would leave it in that form if they ask for exact. Um, because again, pi, it's what we call an irrational number. It never ends. It never repeats in a pattern. So if they want exact, you leave it in the form of pi. If they want approximate, then you multiply by 3.14 or the pi button on your calculator. So this down here would be exact, and this would be approximate. And that is it for our operations with polynomials. And in the next video, part two, we will take a look at functions.